let's go back to like high school. Okay. Freshman Kenzie. Rewind. You know? Oof. We're going back. Freshman Kenzie was a completely different Kenzie. So this is what I'm interested in because I feel like, you know, high school is when everyone's kind of trying to figure out themselves, like figuring out what friend groups they're a part of, who they are. Like it's a very important time in the development of an adult, you know, like you're going into an, into adulthood. Yeah. You know, by the time you graduate, you're basically an adult, adult. usually 18 years old by the time that's done. And yeah. So what, what was it like for you going into high school? Um, I was of a completely different mindset. Um, I was very religious. I sang in the church choir. I was in the youth group on Wednesdays. Um, church was like my freshman year. I was like Christian girl all the way. Uh, was, yeah, that, that's, that's where I was freshman year. And then sophomore year, it just went the opposite way. <laughs> So how, so how did that, uh, how did that, how did it happen? Um, so I started to notice after all the fun and games of church was done, which is why I was there. It was not for the organized religion part. It was the free candy on Wednesdays, um, and the glory of singing on stage, uh, which obviously I like the attention. So that's why I'm in front of a camera a lot. Um, I started to, after I grew out of like seeing all those shiny things, um, noticed that everyone in the church was like drinking a lot, doing drugs, like adults, like parents, uh, my youth pastor had an affair. And so I was just like, Hmm, maybe this organized religion thing is not everything they claim for it to be. Um, and then I started, yeah, exploring more in other areas of teenhood, started going to parties. Um, and then that's when like my super sexual being kicked in and it just full force took over. Um, and then sophomore, I did earn the uh, hashtag name sophomore slut. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I was known as like Tits McGee because um, I was I've had these girls since since freshman year. Um, but yeah, so then it was kind of like, oh, okay, so religion is not for me. It doesn't fit. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of went the opposite direction of <laughs> what they, they taught me in church. <laughs> so, but, so like doing, um, you know, being in church and all of that, all that type of stuff happening, yeah. like those were people who, you know, were supposed to be the symbol of like living properly and righteously and like what, how you're supposed to live, you know, yeah. by God, like seeing them live in such a toxic way and such a reckless, just like manner did that did that have an influence on all of a sudden you deciding to do what you did like moving forward you're like oh now I want to get crazy I don't know if it was like it was the contradiction of them preaching to all of us younger people um you need to live this way and then it was the hypocrisy of them not living that way that was like oh like you can't say for me to do these things when you're not doing them that was a, a light switch in my head uh I don't really care how they lived um, honestly, now that I'm an adult, I'm like, oh, I get it. Like, I, I get, like, being in a monogamous relationship is hard for some. It's not meant for some. So I get, like, the why some people cheat. I'm not that I'm not saying that it's correct. I get the extracurricular of um, wanting to do more substance play and, like, drinking. Like, I get the allure of all of that. It was more the hypocrisy of being so... Uh, demonized if you did any of that when it was like oh you're demonizing like children for wanting to explore this when you're an adult and like you're doing the exact same thing that was really like oh I don't want any part of the hypocrisy the organized religion part I don't like the organized religion the spiritual aspect of the religion I like have stuck with and that's still a huge part of like my being and my morality so I'm happy that I went through that um and it it did give me a bunch of really great friends and I actually just went to Coachella with a girl who was in my uh youth group and it was so funny as we're like jamming out at a Coachella set like <laughs> quite inebriated and we're just like you remember where we met like in youth group like <laughs> so that's interesting that you say that because I you know grew up not super religious but I did my first communion and those things and man sorry yeah, for the yeah. sorry for the noise <laughs> 
<laughs> with these motors, but we decided to do this at a great place. Uh, we wanted to be by the beach, yeah. and it doesn't even matter because we really you could be anywhere. You can't even see the beach. The sun was too strong. Yeah. But, um, but like, that was one thing for me was like seeing the hypocrisy as well, yeah. and like so many people that were religious, but they were just terrible people. Yeah. And I was like, wait. I like I might not go to church as much anymore or not go to church anymore, but I treat human beings and other people just way better than you do. Like I have my moral compass is way is, is pointing the right direction. Yours is backwards, but you go to church on Sunday. Yeah. So you, you think you're like forgiven or yeah, something. It was just can, so it was so hypocritical. Yeah. Sin all week. And then on Sunday, as long as we repent our sins, we're fine. Um, and it's funny because I was never raised religious either. I chose that path on my own. My mom, when I was younger, took me to every organized religious structure and was like, okay, now you choose what you want. And it literally was just because of the games on Wednesdays that I was like, oh, yeah. Christian religion is for me. I like getting together with all my friends, playing games, winning prizes. Like it was fun. So they, it was like the allure of all of that. Um, and yeah, I, I'm grateful that she never like pressured me into being in an organized religion. She, and whenever I would decide to leave, she was like, oh, thank God, because I was really tired of hearing you preach Bible verses at me when I'm drinking a glass of wine at night. <laughs> Dude, I, I totally forgot about Wednesdays. That was when you would go. Youth group. Yeah, youth group. Yeah. You do the little, you know, play games that like you had your, you'd learn stuff like class and stuff. Yeah. But then it was like games and for us we had this like dinner after where everybody would go get food yep. and it would be a little you know dinner and like and we were always there for the games and for dinner yep. and it was the best thing ever it was the best thing ever and then i like sang in the choir too so it was fun like getting up on stage i love music um and so that was another like thing that like drew me into the church um and then of course being on stage and like getting the the clout of like being up there and I'm like ha you guys are in the seats <laughs> you're putting on a show getting clout yeah. before clout was even a thing before clout was even a thing yeah wait let me real quick you got a little mascara there got you cool. got you girl Save me. um but yeah so like what you mentioned the spirituality part of it like I definitely you know listen to like those verses there was things that really resonated with me and things yeah. teachings that really resonated with me and you know even in college i remember one of my classes we were learning about all the philosophers and things like that we you know went into bible verses and there's like stories and teachings and lessons within all of these stories and i'm like do that like i still live by that to some yeah. extent like a lot of stuff i don't even remember where it came from or what but like then i'm like oh that was from the bible, the bible. you yeah. know and then you're like oh i still i still do recall those things and they play a role in my life but i just don't consciously think like religion about that stuff yeah well and like the sentiment of organized religion is like I, I think it's a beautiful thing and i think when people are in a really low place like they need something to lean on so i get the idea of like all of it but i think as humans we're we have a toxicity that just kind of runs in us. And when too many people, too many of the wrong people get into an organized group, like things go bad. And I think that's just kind of what ha has happened with religion. And then again, it comes back to the hypocrisy is like these people think that like their sins are just washed away. It's like, no, like you need to be a good person, not just on Sundays, like Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday all matter as well. Yeah, last time I went to church, my buddy uh, he was dealing with drug addiction and church helped, you know, yeah. to an extent with that. It didn't do anything for him because the people ended up just honestly making things worse. Mm. But he ended up being a super culty church. And I went, he asked me, like, bro, please, like, as my best friend, will you please come, like, yeah. to this church? This is what's going on. I was like, of course, you know, I'll support you. I haven't been to church in forever. I'll yeah. go. And the pastor and his wife just stared at me the entire time because I was the new person. I was like, no, like, oh, don't, don't even. I was pissed, dude. Oh. I was like, Keep, like in my head I'm like keep staring at me bro yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. and then they came up to me like he really like they had a conversation the two of them and then all of a sudden he's pointing at me and he's like I could tell like he was just trying to get me in his he's cult. like you're a new person I need to leer you in exactly yeah. I felt like I, he was preying on me and yeah. I was like oh this guy's no idea like he's trying to prey on the wrong person I'm yeah. never coming back and yeah. not especially I'm not and then the uh, his wife told my buddy that like he has to pick between marijuana and alcohol and God and these things in that he can't have weed and God but and like alcohol is cool God you know turn water into wine <laughs> that was the, but, that, but that's what's funny right so like they were cool with the alcohol part because of that but weed was not okay and I was like 
devil's I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what are we doing here? His drug problem isn't with weed. It's yeah. with actual drugs. Yeah. Uh, the last time I stepped foot into a church, other than in like wedding scenarios, um, was in 2018, and I went to um, a church in Uptown Dallas, which is like a really hoity-toity area. And I remember walking in. The pastor had a Louis Vuitton briefcase, a Louis <laughs> Vuitton Bible case, and then for the first 30 minutes, church is only an hour, y'all. For the first 30 minutes, they were talking about how you needed to tithe 10%. Or you were not going to get to heaven. And I was just like, this is a crock of shit. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but paying your way into heaven is not how you get into heaven. Like, you can be the poorest person out there. And you, as long as you have a kind heart and you're doing your best every day to help be a better person, better other people's lives. Like, that's how you get into quote unquote heaven, whatever it is. Honestly, we have no idea. And anybody who says they know does not know. So also just be a good person, whether something's up there or not. Was this, when you went, was this before you got into the adult industry? Um, yes and no. I was 19, so I had already started dancing at the time. Um, and, it, yeah, I literally, I like going to church on Sundays because, like, the music. I just really like, I still jam out to Christian music, even though, like, I don't affiliate myself with any kind of religion. But, it, like, the songs are cool. They they slap. <laughs> it is, dude, it is fun. The music is nice. Yeah, I like I was going to make the joke, though. I was like, it had to be before you got into the adult industry because you'd walk in and just go up in flames. <laughs> go up in flames. Literally, I went, to a, I went to a wedding in a church, I guess it was a year ago now, and as I was walking in, I was walking in with my buddy, and he was like, are you going to Are you gonna make it through this? Like, are you going to combust into flames? And as I, like, took a step in, I was like, oh, I made it. <laughs> I lived. I lived to tell the tale. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't expect to get into religion. Here we are. Talking to porn stars about organized religion. Yeah. Baby, let's go. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> and Jesus loved the, uh, can I say whore? Jesus loved whores. He did. He Mary Magdalene was like the biggest salute in the world. And he was BFFs with her. Was that your Was that your route? And you're like, you know what? This, this. Oh, I'm going to go this way. <laughs> this way is happening. Yeah. I mean, when I read the Scarlet Letter, I was like, hmm. Feels feels like me. I mean, in high school, I was like, I probably should wear an A. <laughs> You're like, I relate to this. <laughs> I relate to that. Yeah. If you told me in high school that I would be interviewing porn stars or shooting anything of, like, even shooting swimwear stuff, I'd huh. just be like, it doesn't sound likely. I didn't lose my virginity until I was 20 years old. You know, I was an innocent little boy. <laughs> now I'm sitting here with Kenzie. So proud. <laughs> high school, you would be so proud. <laughs> Were you such a good little girl for a portion of high school? My freshman year, and that was about it. Oh yeah, you kind of already, you kind of already said yeah. that. Yeah, freshman year, I was like, I was annoyingly good. Like my mom was like, please, like go do something else and stop judging me for my life. Uh, and then I just went the complete opposite way, and she was like, oh, shit, maybe she really did need church. <laughs> church was a good thing. Was a 